My name is Vasumati At the time I was working in general practice, one of the things that I noticed was that uh, people came in with their asthma inhalers and with spacer devices. They're like plastic chambers. And I'd say, can you show me how you use your device? And they would, they'd take it and they'd use it. And, and they'd, they'd know that it was the right way to do it because that's how they were shown to use it. But what struck me was over the course of the time I was doing this, they all did it differently. And they all knew they were right. So I thought, well, this is a question that's interesting because there's diversity of opinions and everybody's sure about it. So let's, uh, let's try and find out. So I went along and spoke to uh, Steve, who was the, uh, the managing editor, who was very helpful. He said, oh yes, yes, so we have this new database, we can find all the studies for you. He said, yeah, well, we'll help you answer the question. And then he said, uh, oh, and uh, would you like to write a systematic review? So I said, what's that? And he said, oh, don't worry, don't worry, we'll, t we'll, we'll teach you how to do it. So that, then I said, uh, I asked him what I thought was quite a good question, which was, how do you know I can do it? A systematic review is an attempt to answer a question, so a common clinical question. Uh, I know, somebody tells me that garlic, if I get a cold, garlic is a really good thing to take for a cold. So, usually you've got an intervention or some preventative strategy for a condition. That's the way most, that's the vast majority of our questions are those simple kind of clinical questions. So what a systematic review is attempting to do is to find all of the relevant data, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a, very, it's a very specific type of data, randomised control trials data, uh, that would address that question. Then what we do is we bring together all the studies that have been conducted to answer that question. We uh, appraise them to see whether we think they were reliable or not, and then we summarise their results together so we get a complete picture of the body of evidence on that question. When you pool all those estimates, you get um, what you get is a systematic review. The systematic part is that you have to be systematic in your searching of the literature. You have to be systematic in the methods that you use to evaluate. Because anybody can write a review of the literature. I could pick my favourite ten trials about whether garlic works for the common cold because they shore up some pre you know, because they shore up my idea about what the answer to that question is. But a systematic review means you're looking for all of the evidence, all of the evidence you can possibly find to answer that question. Crunch the numbers, get an answer. So it will tell us either it works or it doesn't work, or maybe uh, we don't know yet, maybe we do need more studies for a particular question. Um, and sometimes it will tell us who it works best for and what, what what version of the, the treatment might work best. Each Cochrane Review Group has a specific disease type, so we look after people who have a wound. Um, that can be an acute wound or a chronic wound, um, and we also look at um, the complications of wounds, and we also deal with infection, so wound infection. There's the eyes and vision group, there's the renal group, there's airways group, etc. They're kind of like, I guess you could think of them as the engine room of review production. So authors make contact with a Cochrane review group. That's where they get all of their guidance in terms of how to write the review. I got uh, taught how to do it. I had a superb editor who took me through the different stages and I wrote a protocol about using spaces in acute asthma and it then became a review and the review was published. So somebody coming to us wanting to do a systematic review will contact us and then we'll start a dialogue with them about the question they want to ask, whether that's been done before or if not, if it's a new question, if it's the right question and we work with them 
to get that right. Every group has a managing editor, it has a trial search coordinator and it has a coordinating editor. Managing editor is more involved in the direct contact with the authors and um, the coordinating editor coordinates the editors and the peer reviewers, checking all the reviews before they can be published and to sign off the reviews. There's a huge quality check before a Cochrane review can be published. Reviewers actually come from, coming from all over the world and we have more than currently 600 authors, uh, well covering almost any country in the world. We have a big group in Australia, a big active group of uh, reviewers in Australia. We have editors and reviewers in Canada, in America, some in Europe. Our authors and our editors and our peer reviewers and the people who interact with us can be anywhere and our contact with them is almost always on email. As the collaboration has grown, the scope of its reviews has moved beyond clinical interventions. We're the second most recent review group uh, in the collaboration and at the moment we've got 30 titles but they're titles that span across education, agriculture, transport, food access, slum upgrading. Uh, so we're trying to address the causes of causes, so much more upstream issues in relation to health outcomes. Si la colaboración se quedara estrictamente mirando la parte clínica y comparaciones uno a uno, probablemente iba a perder relevancia en poco tiempo, porque sabemos que el problema no siempre es encontrar qué es efectivo, sino cómo llevarlo a gran escala y que nos beneficie a todos que mejore la salud y la equidad para las poblaciones. And what we've seen over time is that the way in which trials have been done and research have been done is that by um, including what was not there in previous research, we're starting to see that filled. So we see many more studies now that have got cost effectiveness in them, many more studies that are mixed method studies, uh, many more that are really trying to work out did they make a difference to everyone equally or di did they just work for higher income people or more educated people. So the evidence base has shifted remarkably and by updating frequently and using a public health uh, paradigm incorporated into the systematic, systematic methods, it's been really able to shift the field. The collaboration has also become involved in preparing reviews of diagnostic test accuracy. We're breaking new ground. That The collaboration's always broken new ground in the areas it's researched and nobody's done reviews on this scale in, in test evaluation really before. And so we've um, been learning on as we go. Uh, hopefully our reviews are going to be more useful to decision makers than many which are traditionally published in paper journals. Uh, the reviews in paper journals quite often just focus on saying how good one test is, whereas a decision maker has to select between alternative tests. The argument for evidence synthesis uh, is strong. You know, if, if, if health systems want to f use funds uh, economically efficiently, uh, to spend their resources where they're going to be the most effective, if they want to make sure that consumers have uh, the information they need to make decisions, and the same with health professionals, the argument is strong that evidence reviews made available, made accessible, made digestible, um, are, a, are a large part of that uh, policy. <laughs>